This is a picture test in practical anatomy of the upper limb. You may use the video as a revision for the topic or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, you may pause the video and spend your own time to read the question and come up with the answer. Then you can replay the video to confirm your answer by listening to the comments and explanations. Now I will deal with the anatomy of the arm and forearm. Identify the muscles A and B. What is the nerve supply of each and on which joint do they mainly act? A is a deep muscle in the floor of the cubital fossa. It is shown here to wrap around the radius. It is, can be clearly shown because brachioradialis overlying it has been removed. It is the supinator muscle. Note that it wraps around the radius above the anterior oblique line and is attached to the upper third of the radius. Also note that the deep branch of the radial nerve passes between the two heads of origin of this muscle, the supinator muscle, and while doing so, the deep branch of the radial nerve supplies the muscle. B is the muscle that forms the medial boundary of the cubital fossa. It is the pronator teres muscle. Note that the muscle passes obliquely from the medial epicondyle of the humerus, where the superficial head is attached, some fibers from the medial head are not shown here, but they are attached to the ulna, so the muscle has two heads, and the muscle passes across the forearm to be inserted into the lateral surface of the radius near its middle. The median nerve, shown here in the cubital fossa lying medial to the tendon of biceps, passes between the two heads of origin of pronator teres and supplies the muscle while doing so. As their names indicate, pronator and supinator, the pronator teres pronates the forearm, while the supinator supinates the forearm. Pronation and supination takes place at the proximal and distal radio ulnar joint. It should be remembered that these are not the sole pronators or supinators of the forearm. In fact, biceps brachii is a more powerful supinator than the supinator muscle itself and there is another pronator muscle that is the pronator quadratus muscle located in the deep group of the flexor compartment of the forearm. Identify the muscle, what is its nerve supply and where is its distal attachment. This is the tendon of palmaris longus which is a member of the superficial group of flexor muscles of the forearm. Hence, it is supplied by the median nerve, the nerve that supplies most of the muscles of the flexor compartment of the forearm except one and a half muscles. The muscle has a short belly and a long slender tendon that passes superficial to the flexor retinaculum to be inserted into the palmar aponeurosis. The palmar aponeurosis is a central thickening of the deep fascia of the palm. The muscle is functionally unimportant and it is a vestigial muscle that is sometimes absent. When present and when necessary, its tendon can be used as a tendon graft. Identify the process A, which group of forearm muscles is attached to it. A is the medial epicondyle of the humerus that provides attachment for the common flexor origin of forearm muscles. Inflammation here causes golfer's elbow, which is in some ways similar to tennis elbow that affects the common extensor origin of the lateral epicondyle. Identify the process B, which muscle of the arm is attached to it. B is the olecranon of the ulna that provides attachment for the triceps muscle. A 45 year old man presented with a sudden severe pain at the elbow while lifting a heavy weight. On examination, there was bruising, weak supination, and an unusual bump distal to the shoulder. He was diagnosed to have a tendon rupture. Which muscle tendon is affected? The detached muscle belly is located in the anterior compartment of the arm. It is the superficial muscle in the compartment, the biceps brachii muscle. Its distal tendon, where it is attached to the radial tuberosity, is torn, causing the muscle 
to ball up near the shoulder. Sometimes the tendon of the long head of biceps may rupture, in which case the detached muscle belly forms a ball near the center of the distal part of the anterior aspect of the arm. These ruptures result from forceful flexion of the arm against resistance as occurs in weightlifters. Identify the muscle A and B, what is the action of each on the wrist joint. This is a dissection of the muscles of the flexor compartment of the forearm. The muscles of the anterior compartment of the forearm are best thought of as lying in three layers, superficial, intermediate, and deep. The superficial layer consists of four muscles, pronator teres, flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus, not present in this body, and flexor carpi ulnaris. These muscles, the superficial group, arise from a common flexor origin on the anterior surface of the medial epicondyle of the humerus. Note that they are partly fused together in the upper part of the forearm, so that the intermediate layer cannot be easily seen. Toward the wrist, they narrow down to tendons so that the tendons of the intermediate layer, flexor digitorum superficialis, are seen between them. Here, they are more clearly seen because of the absence of palmaris longus tendon as well. So A is flexor carpi radialis. It is located on the radial side, extending from the common flexor origin. It lies medial to pronator teres at the middle of the forearm. And the belly gives rise to a long tendon that is inserted into the bases of the second and third metacarpal bones. B is flexor carpi ulnaris. It is the most medial of the superficial muscle group and its origin can be traced to the common flexor origin. However, the muscle has an extra origin, not shown here, by means of an aponeurosis from the posterior subcutaneous border of the ulna. If you follow the tendon of this muscle, flexor carpi ulnaris, it is inserted into the pisiform bone and the pisiform bone is considered as a sesamoid bone in the tendon of the muscle because there is another ligament extending from the pisiform bone to the fifth metacarpal bone called pisometacarpal ligament. The two muscles have a weak flexor action on the elbow since they arise from the common flexor origin proximal to the elbow. But the most important is that the muscles are distally attached to the metacarpal bones. Hence, they flex the carpus at the wrist joint. The carpal flexors also abduct or adduct the wrist depending on which side of metacarpals they are inserted to. So flexor carpi radialis abducts or radially deviates and flexor carpi ulnaris adducts the hand. In addition, flexor carpi ulnaris and flexor carpi radialis, when acting together, they flex the carpus and abduction cancels out adduction. When the radial carpal flexor works together with extensor carpi radialis, then the flexion will cancel out extension and only adduction remains, since both the flexor and extensor muscles has a common action of abducting the wrist. The same is true for the flexor and extensor carpi ulnaris. When they act together, they adduct the hand because flexion cancels out extension. Identify the bony process A, which tendon is located in the groove B, and identify the bony process C. This is the dorsal surface of the distal end of the radius. The prominent tubercle A is the dorsal tubercle of Lister. The groove B, medial to it, is for the tendon of extensor pollicis longus, where the tubercle serves as a pulley to change the direction of pull of the tendon. C is the styloid process of the radius, which is located at the most distal end of its lateral border, and it can be palpated lateral to the wrist. The tubercle A can also be felt dorsal to the distal end of the radius. A 22-year-old male developed weakness of the elbow flexion and supination after sustaining a penetrating wound in the arm. Nerve conduction studies indicated that a nerve has been injured. The continuation of which of the labeled nerves is most likely injured. Now, elbow flexion is primarily produced by brachialis and biceps brachii muscles. 
supination is mainly produced by biceps brachii muscle, which is the powerful supinator. Weakness of elbow flexion and supination indicated denervation of biceps and brachialis. These two muscles are supplied by the musculocutaneous nerve. Weak flexion of the elbow can still be produced by muscles of the flexor compartment of the forearm arising from the common flexor origin. These are supplied mainly by the median nerve. However, ulnar nerve supplies also flexor carpi ulnaris. These anterior compartment muscles are mainly flexors of the carpus and digits, but since they arise from the medial epicondyle of the humerus, then they cross the elbow and can have a weak flexion action on the elbow. Brachioradialis, which is supplied by the radial nerve, can also assist flexing the elbow. Now returning back to the case, the musculocutaneous nerve in the arm is located between both biceps and brachialis, which it supplies. In the axilla, where the nerve, the musculocutaneous nerve, is required to be identified, it is a branch of the lateral cord of the brachial plexus that passes through coracobrachialis muscle, which it also supplies. A is therefore the musculocutaneous nerve, which is the nerve of the flexor compartment of the arm supplying these three muscles, biceps, brachialis, and coracobrachialis. The other nerves shown here are easily identified if you visualize the capital letter M configuration formed by the terminal branches of the lateral and medial cords of the brachial plexus. This is the lateral cord and its two terminal branches are musculocutaneous and lateral root of the median nerve. And this is the medial cord, medial to axillary artery. And this is the medial root of the median nerve. And the other terminal branch of the medial cord is the ulnar nerve. And so you can clearly see here the capital M configuration. B is the median nerve, C is the ulnar nerve, and A is the musculocutaneous nerve. This is the nerve that is injured in the arm and results in weakness of elbow flexion and supination because it supplies biceps and brachialis.